Greetings, fellow modelers, and welcome to another edition of Operations 101. With East Rail being the cover story in the September issue of RMC, I thought now might be a good time to show it in action and make it uh, work for a living. Today we're going to be talking about logistics warehouses and car spots. Logistics warehouses are really the perfect industry for a model railroad because you can incorporate essentially what is a large number of businesses and a small amount of space. So when you look at this uh, structure here, which is Omni Logistics, um, at first glance, you would just think it's a beige cube, one industry, but in fact, it's not. The way that logistics warehouses work is each bay or combination of bays is sublet to different uh, lessors, meaning that each door essentially represents a different customer. So that gives us the opportunity to have a lot of uh, customers uh, in a small amount of space. And then keep in mind, um, since each door is a different customer, you can't just dump cars wherever you want. It's not The wine producer is not going to be too thrilled if he opens the door and finds out that the what he thought was a car of wine is loaded with lumber. So the term car spots refer to industries where a car has to be put at a specific spot. Uh, in contrast, if you took something like a scrapyard, it doesn't matter. It's all one commodity. You put it in, a, in the gate and there's really no spotting involved. But with a logistics warehouse, they are car spot dependent. It really does matter which car goes to which door. So to start, what I'm going to do is assign a tenant to each of these four doors. And rather than being... Uh, you know, two pie in the sky, what I've done is pick actual industries in Miami, some that I know actually are rail served, so that whatever uh, we come up with is plausible. And what I'm going to do is put placards on each one so you can follow the video. Um, in an actual operating session, I wouldn't help the guys out that much. I mean, they're going to have to figure it out. Each door is uh, numbered, so when you look at the switchlets, it's going to tell you which car goes to which door. So, Having said that, let me put some of these placards up so you can see um, how the session is going to be set up. One of the most common commodities uh, shipped by rail is uh, lumber supplies. So what I'm going to do is call these two bays Dixie Plywood. And so Dixie Plywood actually does exist in Miami, so that's where I came up with the name. Surprisingly, another commodity that's shipped very frequently is uh, wine and adult beverages, uh, particularly up in here in uh, Maryland, you see it all the time. So again, going to uh, Google and looking up uh, uh, wine distributors, I came up with Antares Wine. So we're going to call Bay 2 Antares. And then the actual Omni Logistics does take reefers. And so I'm going to steal an industry from the downtown spur, which is Pan Am Frozen Food, which takes potatoes probably from Idaho and then makes them into uh, french fries. So we're going to have door one be Pan Am frozen food. And so what looked like originally just one uh, structure, one industry, we can see is three. Bays four and three are leased to Dixie Plywood. Those will take lumber. Bay two is going to take wine for Antares. And then Bay 1 will take reefers of um, potatoes. And there is some method to my madness with the color coding, so you can follow along. The, uh, the color of the tags is going to match the cover of the uh, incoming freight cars to help you out a little bit. And here we have the incoming cut of cars for uh, Omni Logistics. So lumber often comes in high cubes. So that is going to be for Dixie Plywood. The blue car, which would correspond to the blue tag, would be uh, wine for Antares. And then the reefer would be for Pan Am frozen food. Um, we're going to assume that these cars were not sorted in the yard, so we're going to have to uh, put them in car spot order um, before we can spot them at the correct doors. I like to have my designs uh, entail a lot of breathing room, so we have room to uh, maneuver around without things in the way. So I have a lot of long leads here um, with not a lot to uh, bog us down. And what we're going to be doing 
is using this track in the front to sort the cars and put them in car spot order. And then we will move them over to uh, Omni. The uh, car in front of Antares, we're assuming is an empty, so that's gonna be pulled. Before we get into the actual op session, I just wanted to stage this for a second so you can see what we're trying to do. Um, in this view, you can see why the color-coded placards uh, are used and how they correspond to the cars. Here we have the incoming cars destined for Omni, totally out of order. So the lumber car is gonna have to go here for Dixie. This would stay in the middle for Antares, and then this needs to be moved all the way to the other end uh, for Pan Am frozen food. So that's what we're gonna be doing, or the method to my madness in terms of sorting these out. And then I'm gonna pull the empty in the uh, final stage. So with the preliminaries out of the way, let's get to work here. The first thing I'm gonna do is just move this cut of three cars to a sorting track. So let's get him over there. You look to the lower right, you can see the turnout, so we're going to have to stop, unlock that, and throw it. So we're just going to stop a second and do that. Conductor inspects it, and then let's just get him down there. Clear the grade crossing, push them across that. And that should be far enough. I'm going to exercise some conductor's prerogative here. I've changed my mind. I'm going to go pick up that empty. So we're going to cut him loose. Throw the turnout, run down the Omni. The conductor is going to ask for three step, and I believe he will undo the handbrake. No, actually, I take that back. He undoes the handbrake after the couple. Railroad friends corrected me on that.
Okay, we have the car now, we re release the handbrake. And we're gonna take him back to that cut of cars. And there is a design message as we go through this, is that if you are careful and strategic about the industries you pick, it takes a while to work them. It doesn't take that much layout to keep you busy for quite a while. So as we shuffle these incoming loads, I'm just going to use the empty as a handle. I think that's going to be the easiest way to do it. Throw the turnout and go back to the cut. Street's not very heavily traveled, so we can block it if need be. Maybe one car every 15 minutes comes through there. There we go. So what I'm going to do is block these on the Omni lead and then shove everything back in one shove. So the first thing I need to do is split off the uh, reefer. Hopefully I can get it to uncouple a little bit easier than before. Throw the switch and let's get him on the Omni lead. You probably spot these one car at a time. I'm not sure how the pros would do it. You can weigh in when you watch this. I'm going to do three step. And then I'm going to put the blue Antares behind him. One thing I've noticed is that this equipment always runs better after warming up a little bit. It's running better now than when I first started about 30 minutes ago. The more often you run your layout, the better it will perform. And when I was down there, the uh, conductor was riding the footboards of the car, so he would have been on the right front stirrup riding along. My railroad friend said stop and then move in, although I think it varies by railroad. I don't know that CSS does that, but I'm going to do it anyway. Safety stop. We have 
of it. And Tari's car, three-step, we're going to uncouple him. So I'm, I edited it out, but one mistake I made is I set this cut of cars on a curve, which makes the coupling and uncoupling uh, much harder. So I'm going to do a redo here. And I've just slid them down to the straight piece of track so the coupling is much uh, easier. So that's why they're going to be in a little bit different position than you saw a second ago. Should have done that in the first place. encourage you to read the comments on these videos uh, or come back and uh, after a week or so a lot of times the professional railroaders will school me on things I've done wrong or the right way to do it so you can learn a lot by reading the comments that they put in afterwards. It's surprising how many professional railroaders are model railroaders too. They make great operators at obsessions. go back and get the high cube and we'll have everything in order and then we'll just shove it down. So he's back on the foot stirrups going for a ride. And this is just one industry, I'm not even working all of them. Keep you entertained for quite a while. Keep my friends happy. I'm going to do a safety stop. So, no complaining, guys, even though I will go on record that I don't think CSX does this. Remember, they released the handbrake after the couple, so let's get him back. There we go. Now we have everything in order and we're going to do one grand shove to close things out. And just as an educational reminder, because we're going to be doing the shove for safety reasons, it's imperative that we make sure that we have the couple. So you will hear the conductor say, uh, give me a tug and he's going to back up just to make sure everything is hooked up. So we have everything and now we're in a position where we can uh, spot the cars. So 
Now things are in pretty good shape. Uh, we have everything blocked the way that we uh, wanted to, and it's time to do the big shove back into uh, Omni, the uh, industry. And what we're gonna do is spot each car at a door. We're gonna set the handbrake, uncouple, and then pull forward. So let's get him uh, down and get the reefer spotted, and then we'll take it from there. Once again, I would not put those uh, colored cards up during a solo session or with a group. Those are really just so you can follow the video. So there's Pan Am, and as I was uh, told by the professionals, the uh, next step would be setting the handbrake. That's done before you uncouple, so we're going to do that. And actually, I'm looking at the doors on this and my door spacing. I think I'm going to leave everything coupled with Antares and make the uncouple uh, for the load for Dixie Plywood and pull him up. probably be more common to see these doors space for 60 foot cars I just didn't have the room for it so let's pull him up and of the two cars that are spotted you would only set handbrakes on one of them So he's in position, uncouple, set the handbrake and uncouple him. And there we go. Time to head back. Realistically, the train would be outside the uh, industrial park on the siding. So we're going to get him back to where he needs to go. So you can see we got a lot of play value out of a relatively small area. We weren't doing anything uh, contrived or toy-like. It's the way the real world runs. So we were able to get a lot of uh, enjoyment out of something relatively simple. And that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching, folks.